JavaScript is the world's most popular programming language. It runs on pretty much everything, but it usually runs in some version of a browser, be it the actual browser that you're using like Chrome or through something like Electron, you know, for your desktop apps like Spotify, Discord, and all of that. And I know, I know, JavaScript sucks. It's making all of these things terrible. It's the reason that Spotify and Discord are so awful to use. Sure. But that's not what we're talking about today. We're not just here to showcase things that are running in browsers because JavaScript runs in a lot of places that aren't browsers. And no, I'm not talking about Node either. I'm talking about stuff that's actually going to surprise you. From game consoles to Linux, the things you can do today with JavaScript are unbelievable. Do you know what else is unbelievable? Today's sponsor. Let's hear from them really quick. Savala. I've talked about these guys a bit before. Think of them kind of like Vercel for everyone else. And they're not some random new startup. They're built by Kinsta, the people who made WordPress hosting not suck. I've previously shown how easy it is to deploy and manage your deployments. What I didn't know is how crazy their pipeline stuff is. Preview deployments are a thing I take for granted as a JS dev, but the way they have it set up here is nuts. Not only can you have one application deployed a bunch of different times following things like the GitHub pull requests, you actually have a whole pipeline view where you can see which builds are where, and you can one-click promote things to production. You can even click from here to get direct access to the build so you can see how it's working up and running and everything you need to go get to GitHub as well. It's so nice having everything here in one place. Here's a PR that Peter made on this test repo for me. And as soon as he made the PR, immediately you get a preview build, just like we do on things like Vercel. Tell me that's not cool. I don't know of any other server platform that has all of this baked out for you right when you get going. And if you sign up today, you get a $50 credit for free. Check them out now at soydev.link slash Savala. So to start things off, I want to show the example that I personally didn't know ran JS and surprised me so much that it inspired this whole video idea. That thing is GNOME. Yes, GNOME, the desktop environment that is super common in the Linux world, the thing that comes with Ubuntu by default, it's using JavaScript. And yes, I know, I'm not the biggest Linux guy. I used to be, but I'm giving it an honest go right now. And to learn that GNOME is largely built on JavaScript was just so unbelievable to me. GNOME's broken up into a few parts, but GNOME shell, which is the like core that everything runs through, is almost 50% JS. Read it and weep, boys. 46.5%. Nuts, right? I thought that was really cool. That was a surprise for me to learn. And the reason they chose it is they wanted a scripting language that wasn't as miserable to compile and deal with that could be accessible to other people trying to contribute extensions to GNOME. And as a result, every single GNOME extension is written in JavaScript, which I personally think is kind of cool. Okay, real talk though. I can't run a computer that's using JavaScript for its main desktop environment and operating system. I'm going to switch this out for a real OS quick. Give me one sec. There we go. Now we got a real machine running a real operating system. You know, one that runs real languages like a Swift. Home sweet home. Now I have to take off the hoodie for identity theft. Keeping the hoodie on, but uh, I'm getting these headphones off for sure. Had my fun there. Anyways. No more JavaScript in my operating system. Sadly, if I was using Windows, that would not be the case because believe it or not, a lot of Windows 11 is now running React Native. This is actually a funny interaction I had where my Windows start menu was having some problems. It seemed like someone else had those issues. So a friend of the channel, Jamin, who you've probably seen me bring up a whole bunch in sponsor stuff because he's a React Native god. He's one of the ones that's helped some amount with Microsoft doing these things. I don't know how involved he's been with code, but I know he chats with a bunch of Microsoft employees about React Native stuff constantly. And believe it or not, React Native is being used for parts of the start menu, specifically the recommended section, which is funny enough, one of the few parts that works. In case you're questioning Microsoft's commitment to React Native, check out this repo. Not only are they building React Native for Windows, they're also building it for Mac because they're real committed to using it in desktop applications. Microsoft recognizes that a lot of their dev tools suck. It's not fun building native desktop apps. Even platforms like UWP didn't really make things good enough 
and Microsoft has stopped pretending. That's why stuff like Windows Subsystem for Linux has gotten as good as it has. That's also why React Native for Windows exists and is getting good fast, because they're dogfooding it and using it for a ton of stuff. More and more of Office is starting to use React Native. The calculator app on Windows is a fully React Native application. They're taking advantage of these tools and technologies in order to make it better for them to dev on Windows and for others as well. And if they get it all right, not only will your React Native apps work on Windows, it'll work on Mac too. So as crazy as it sounds, more and more Microsoft applications and even parts of the operating system are being moved to JavaScript and React Native. At least I'm safe on my Mac and on my PlayStation and my other consoles, right? <laughs> well, obviously the Xbox is running React Native too. I hope that's kind of obvious because React Native, Windows, Xbox, also kind of Windows. But what might surprise you is another console. It's kind of a poorly kept secret, but the PlayStation 5 uses React Native 2. And not just a little bit of it. Most of the PlayStation 5's operating system and shell are written in React Native, and they're doing really, really cool stuff. I can't go full in depth on this video, but if you want a video dedicated to how the PlayStation specifically uses JS and React Native for its whole OS, let me know. I'm deep in the process of reverse engineering this with a couple people from the PlayStation jailbreak community, and we're already finding a ton of JavaScript bundles and binaries that are being used to run React Native on the PlayStation for basically the entire operating system. There is some really, really cool stuff here that I am super excited to talk about. So let me know in the comments if you're ready for that video too. I see people mentioning that technically Nintendo Switch also uses HTML for parts of the OS, kind of. Fun fact about the Wii settings menu, like for system settings, it was actually just an HTML page and someone preserved it. So you can open the Wii settings on any computer and it's the exact same Wii settings page which I just love. Technically not JavaScript because it's just HTML, but yeah, the, the history of using web technologies to make it easier to build things for consoles is long running. And the same way the Wii used to run HTML for its settings menu, the PlayStation uses React Native for everything. But our games are safe, right? Maybe the OS is using a whole bunch of JavaScript, but our games aren't going to be hit with this impurity, especially from game engine authors. You know, people who are building things like Frostbite, Unreal Engine, or Unity, there's no way they're going to use JavaScript. I got some bad news for y'all. <laughs> Question, who uses MobX? MobX is a state management library for React. And there's an interesting reply in here. An employee from DICE, you know, the Electronic Arts Studio, commented, most of the UI in Battlefield 1 is created in TypeScript with a React custom renderer. We started using MobX for state about two years ago. The project size is about a thousand React components with 644 observables, 621 actions, and 598 computed values with 729 observers. It's closed source, but you can see it if you play the game. Yeah, the UI layer in Battlefield is entirely built in React as well. There's a lot of reasons for this one. I'll be honest, the biggest one is because Frostbite kind of sucks and there is no menu system built in the game engine. Hell, there's no asset loading system built in the game engine. You have to roll everything yourself. But they built their own rasterization and rendering engine in order to put UI on top of the game engine. And they just use React because it's easier than building their own system for it. <laughs> but yeah, there are whole games that have their entire UI layer built in JS, but not the game. Games themselves are hopefully pure, even if their UIs and the tracking of the bullets is JavaScript. Right? 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 If you guys don't know Vampire Survivors, it's one of my all-time favorite indie games. And usually it's not played on the browser. Usually it's played on home consoles or through the Steam version. I adore this game. And when I learned it was JavaScript-based, I was blown away because some of the combat and some of the scenes you end up in can get absurd would be putting it lightly. The performance hell that this game offers is kind of hilarious. And to know that this is all written with phaser in JS is insane. That said, there's no way you're going to get a game like this to run well on something like, I don't know, the Switch, if the whole thing is JS based, because you just don't have enough CPU. So the way they solved that is absolutely hilarious. They solved it by hiring a team of C++ devs to port the entire game feature for feature to consoles. But the lead dev still builds it in JavaScript in the browser. So he works on it here in the browser version, 
gets features exactly where he wants them, gets the game in a state that he's happy with, and then passes it off to the native team to go port it to the C++ version. And that poor C++ team has to port all these weird like floating point behaviors that exist in JS in order to make the game feel as close as possible on the native console version as it feels in the WebJS version. It's nuts. There's a whole documentary about this game from Noclip, who is the, like the best video game documentarian ever. Highly recommend checking this out if you want more about the crazy history of this particular game, because it's nuts. It's so cool. And learning that it ran JavaScript and learning the history of where it came from, easy watch, super simple recommendation. Check it out. Yeah. By the way, this just got linked in chat. There's a whole talk on how you can build UI for AAA games with HTML and JS. Obviously, Electronic Arts are the ones who gave this presentation because they also built the UI for SimCity and the SimCity expansion of recent in JS and HTML as well. So this isn't a thing they just did once. EA is pretty deep on using JavaScript and React in order to build better UIs and games without having to hire specialized game UI teams building custom tools for fucking everything. This is really cool. And one more quick thing. This one I've been deep on research for for a while. Technically, it's not JavaScript, but it is still React, so it gets an honorable mention. React Lua, which is a fork of a version that was built by Roblox originally called Roact. Roact was an attempt at porting React to Lua so that the patterns and what paradigms we had for building good UIs could be built in Lua for Roblox. <laughs> yes. They ported all of React to Roblox. Roact was barely a port. It was a shitty attempt at re-implementing the API. React Lua was a from the ground rewrite where they went line by line through the React code base and changed all the zero indexes to ones and fixed all the things they could in order to try and get React fully ported to Lua. <laughs> kind of insane. Technically not JavaScript, although they did write some tools to auto port JavaScript code to Lua. Just thought it was worth mentioning because React has been coming up a whole bunch, but technically Roblox is JavaScript free, but it's still not React free. So I guess in the end, you can't be pure of JS. And even though I'm wearing my Primogen JS sucks hoodie, I can't escape it. I'd have to give up Linux and Ubuntu. I'd have to give up some of my favorite games. I'd have to give up some of my least favorite games from Dice. I'd have to give up using Windows almost entirely. I'd have to give up so much. Hell, I'd even have to give up VR nowadays too. But if you accept that JavaScript is a good way to build a lot of different things, life might be a little bit better. And no, I'm not trying to defend Electron, but let me know if I should do that in the future because I have a lot to say. Until next time, peace nerds.